Okay. Welcome or welcome back. Uh, hello and uh, greetings from New York. This is Matt Abitello. I'm going to just rerun through what I said if anybody had started. Um, I want to welcome you today to take two <laughs> of our team's meetings, education sessions for government. And I want to uh, give a special welcome to customers from New Jersey, my customers from New York and Alabama. We're going to kick off a session here on accessibility in teams. And with us today, we have Chris Christopher Sweetland, a CSM from the West Coast, and some folks from our awesome customer uh, success training team uh, out of the Microsoft stores. Before we send it over to Anne, who's going to do the presentation, and Kai and Francisco, who are helping out in the background of the demo, uh, I want to share something important, something about Microsoft's commitment to accessibility. Microsoft is committed to accessibility. You may have heard this from Satya in the last few years. Jenny Leigh Fleury, our Chief Accessibility Officer, sums it up by saying Microsoft believes accessibility and inclusion are essential to delivering on our mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So I encourage you to uh, visit Microsoft.com slash accessibility to learn some inspiring stories and learn more about our approach, which could be described as embedding accessibility and inclusion into our DNA. And this can be seen in at least three significant ways. It starts internally within the company with, in with an inclusive culture throughout hiring, recruiting, training the entire career. We're investing and committed to innovation and research and we're bringing inclusive design to the core of all of our Microsoft products and services. So that's a good segue to our team session. Uh, and with that, I wish everyone a great day too. Enjoy the presentations and let's go to Anne. Hello and welcome everybody back to our second, uh, our backup call here today. We sincerely apologize for all of the trouble there, but we're confident and glad to have you back. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. So you should be seeing my screen, my starting point here. I'm from the Microsoft's uh, location, the office right on Fifth Avenue in New York City, so it's a pleasure to be here today. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Teams, in particular, zooming in on the accessibility features inside of Teams specifically, um, as much as we would like to show you everything in Office 365 that is related to accessibility, we have 90-minute sessions that we offer for that specifically um, at no cost. So. We're going to try and condense just the team's uh, oriented pieces here for you today. And we're going to go over this in two parts, primarily team settings, which is the starting point for your experience in teams. And then after that, we're going to touch on teams meeting options and what are the features that you have available for you instead of a team's meeting in order to help um, kind of bridge some gaps in so far as accessibility and communication goes in a larger group setting like what we have here um, and in a virtual meeting setting. So for starters, team settings. And the first one here that we're gonna touch on um, is your ability to customize the appearance of Teams itself with zooming in or out. A lot of us take this for granted and most folks will just install Teams and maybe never look at the Zoom feature from there, but this is something that is separate from the Windows 10 Zoom where it will only zoom in Teams and it will change and adjust the menus and everything accordingly so that you can still navigate Teams in a nice intuitive manner, but without having to squint so hard for the letters that you're looking for, for the words that you're looking for. For my personal preference and my needs, I'm going to actually bring it back to 100%. I'm gonna move on from there to the next one. Inside of Teams, in the settings proper, we're gonna go ahead and click on settings here. And this will pop up this window where we can then choose a few more uh, settings to fine tune our experience, starting with the physical appearance of Teams. Inside of Teams, you have three main themes that come with it. You have the default theme, which is your silver tone, your uh, whiter colors, your lighter uh, color scheme. Then you also have a dark theme. And as you select them, Teams will respond immediately and change to those colors so that you can preview them before you settle. 
And then finally, for folks that are looking for a high contrast option for Teams, you can select high contrast and that will render Teams alone in this high contrast view. Moving on from there, uh, we're going to take a few brief notes. I'm going to bring us back to the default view. Um, I'm going to briefly note um, the other settings that you also have inside of Teams that you can control. For starters, you have the ability to disable animations as needed. So if there's a reason or if you have a if you are particularly sensitive towards animations or too much movement on your screen, much like in Windows 10, you have a similar setting to disable animations in Windows 10. Teams has its own set of animations and you can enable or check, check off the ability to turn it off and that will ask you to restart Teams and that way everything pops open as opposed to too much movement happening. Again, if you're sensitive to that, it's very, very helpful. Secondly, we have notifications here under Teams settings and in notifications, you'll notice here that you have some drop downs all the way down this list that allow you to customize how much and how you receive your notifications. So the first thing here in mentions, messages, other and highlights, um, those are your four major areas that you can control and the four main settings that you can choose in any of these drop downs are banner and email notification if you want to receive an email digest banner only notification and that refers to the little flag that you get so whenever you see the word banner we're referring to the small flags that you get on your screen either from windows 10 or from teams alone below that you have the ability to choose to only show it to you in your feed and what we're referring to the feed here is the activity feed in the top left corner of Teams if you're using it visually. Otherwise, if you're using a screen reader or using your keyboard, it's where you land when you press Control-1 inside of Teams. That's your shortcut to reach that activity feed. And then finally, you have Off, and that will just disable the, uh, the notification for that category completely. Of course, there are some that you cannot avoid, but you can reduce the rest that you don't need to see as much as off as much as possible so you can stay focused on your work and you don't get your you don't have your workflow interrupted as often. And that can help a lot, especially if you are like myself living with ADHD and other uh, and other disabilities that may get in the way of how you interact and how you go through your workday. So after that, we also have I think the last item here that I was going to point out was under devices and in devices, um, I believe towards the very bottom or is it? Um, I apologize. My own forgetfulness gets ahead of me. So we have in calls the feature that I was looking for. Um, this isn't a commonly used feature anymore. And what I mean by that is not everyone has a TTY device um, anymore. That's not the most common option if you're deaf or if you're hard of hearing and you speak ASL or you read. So, uh, but for anyone who is still using a TTY device, Teams is compatible here with TTY devices. If you are using a video relay service, the nice thing is that you can invite guests into Teams. So instead of perhaps relying on the video relay service from outside, you would be able to invite the interpreter directly into your call um, and have an ASL interpreter as part of your Teams meeting call, um, like I'm going to show you shortly. So. That kind of wraps the first part there. Just a quick look at what settings you have inside of the Teams application proper that really help uh, contribute to a much better experience that you can customize according to your individual needs. And then alongside that, now we're going to show you what it's like inside of a Teams meeting. But before I really go into the meeting proper, I'm going to start the meeting shortly. I'm going to show you something else that lives um, a little bit hidden inside of Teams. Uh, so whenever you are in Teams, if you are in a channel, if you are in a Teams chat with an individual, if you are in a group chat, if you are looking at anything that is text related in Teams, you have these reactions. I'm going to ask us to ignore the reactions piece for now when you mouse over or when you select that topic or that post. And I'm going to ask that you instead look at the more options that you have next to those reactions. So when you click on more options or the ellipses option that comes up next to those reactions, you have four, well, you have five items that come down um, on the menu. One of them is translate, which is a pretty cool feature that you can leverage in case you are ever working with someone who has maybe shared a message in a different language, or even if you're trying to say, for example, share a message to somebody else that you, uh, that you located on a different website, you can share that message there as well.
So now we're going to go ahead and start the call. And I believe Christopher will be the one answering the call on the other hand shortly um, inside of this same general chat or this same general channel. On the top right, I have a small icon, very, very small icon. I'm going to use my magnifier here to show you what it looks like up close. Let's see there. It's a very small icon of a camera and it's right next to our team um, kind of blurb. It's between that and the information. When you select this icon for meet now, it gives you two options. You can either schedule a meeting or you can meet now. If you start the call now, it'll just let everybody know that, hey, there is a live call happening in this space and that's it. I'm going to leave my camera off for now since I'm already using it on this live meeting right now that we're in. But I am going to turn on my computer audio, though I will go ahead and mute myself. And that way, once Christopher joins the call, I'll be able to hear him. I'll click on join now. And that's fairly the start of it. Um, we're kind of off to the races there and so far as the call goes. And inside of the actual channel, the call is easy to find and locate. You can click on join to join the same call that I'm currently in in the other window. So while Chris makes his way over, I'll start showing you a few features inside of Teams meetings. So for a start, um, when you have multiple people inside of the call, sometimes you'll have quite a few folks on screen. Not sometimes, maybe often, most of the time, you'll have quite a few folks on screen sharing cameras. If you have an ASL interpreter, the following becomes very, very important. You have the ability to pin someone into your call or into your view of your call. When you're switching through different views that you have here instead of more options, the default one is gallery. And while you're in the gallery view, you have the ability to pin someone to the call. Hello, Christopher. Thanks for joining us. So to do this, to pin Christopher's image or to pin Christopher's feed to the call so that I don't lose sight of it, um, as other people start turning on their cameras, I can right click on this and I can select pin. And for now, I'm actually going to mute you, Christopher. I think I can hear you here too. Oop. Yeah, the ability to mute folks on the fly as well. So now that we've pinned Christopher, as more people come onto the call, as more people join this area, that uh, I both see. Hey, oh. good morning from Portland. Hey. There we go. Um, I see the pin icon that's telling me that he is pinned to my personal view of the gallery view. So that way I never lose track of him. If he's my interpreter, he will stay on the screen as other people start joining the call. And that way I can see my interpreter and the interpreter is able to speak on my behalf or I can leverage the chat inside of meeting or inside of the meeting in order to communicate with my colleagues. A few other things that you can do inside of here. After pinning folks alongside the need to interpret and alongside the need to communicate with your group or with your meeting uh, and your colleagues, you have the ability to raise your hand. Whenever you, especially in situations like this where you have an interpreter in between and there's a need to have people communicate one by one, you can leverage raising your hand instead of a call to indicate that you would like to go next and the moderator of the call will see in the participants list anyone whose hand has been raised at the very top of the list in the order that they raise their hand in. Once that person has spoken, they can have their hand lowered or you can lower their hand for them from this participants list. That point right there is very, very important and I made sure to mention that alongside the pinning uh, folks piece and the piece around uh, ASL and uh, interpretation in that manner or communication in that manner because it is very important, especially for the following piece and uh, when you have an interpreter in between to do things one by one. There's a really cool feature that we have inside of Teams meetings that allows you to help bridge some gaps here and it's called turn on live captions. So now we're starting to put together the idea of why it's so important to also make sure that if you're relying on captions and you have an ASL interpreter in the call, that you have a way to organize who's going next, who's speaking when, a way to control that flow of traffic, if you will. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on live captions. And, and yes. I just, I just wanted to let you know, you can go until um, 30, two o'clock Eastern until 2 p.m. Yeah, Okay. no worries. Um, I may 
Most if you wrap up, that's fine. If you wrap yeah. up, that's fine. Okay. Just questions. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, so we'll probably have some time to answer some questions then from the Q&A chat. So moving on with some of our captions here, I've turned on my captions and to the top left hand corner, I now see an indicator that says live captions are on when I mouse over it, but the actual indicator itself just says CC. That way I know that my captions are on. Christopher, do you mind saying something to the camera, please, so we can see what my captions look like? Sure, I'll be glad to start talking. Uh, hopefully uh, everyone's having a great day and uh, really appreciating uh, this great presentation by the New York store. Perfect. And if I start speaking. Hello, Christopher. Now you might hear me in two locations and I apologize to you for that. But as I'm speaking also, I can see that Teams is taking my verbs, my what I'm saying, my words and placing it in captions at the bottom of the screen. This does not get in the way of sharing your screen. Um, and there's really, it's a really great tool to leverage when you have multiple folks in a call. Um, captions are amazing for just about anyone who relies on them. Not only folks that are hard of hearing or deaf, but also for attention deficit as well. Very, very useful. Thank you, Christopher, for that. So that's another feature that we have inside of Teams meetings that you can leverage. Is it perfect? Will it replace an ASL translator? Absolutely not, um, but it is a great tool to have in hand um, and it's one that we're working on actively together as Microsoft as a whole to improve on our journey on accessibility and reaching best usability, which is a slightly different topic, but is a better way to go about it. Now going on from there, um, I mentioned raising hands. I think the one of the final features that I was going to mention was blurring your background. So Christopher, do you mind sharing your video one more time? And uh, that way we can see what the result is and I'll walk through how to get there. So you'll notice on the screen, you'll notice that Christopher has his video shared right now and you'll notice that Curiously enough, you only see him in focus. You don't see anything else in the background really in focus. You can kind of tell that he's standing in a living room with a window behind him, but that's about it. There's no distractions rolling by. Um, there's nothing else really in focus that will draw your attention away from Christopher. The way that you enable this is going into sharing your camera. So if I go to turn my camera on, I handily have this little preview. Of course, it won't be able to actually pick anything up immediately because my camera is already in use. But if I click on background effects, that will open up the menu on the right hand side, this panel that you now see. And in this panel, you have a few that have already been pre-built into Teams. You can also have some fun and add a new one if you want to be cheeky and find your own that is work appropriate, of course, to share inside of your calls as well with your colleagues. But if you're looking for just a background blur, that will always be there and all you do is select blur. And then once you're ready, you can select apply and turn on video and that will create a similar effect to what you see on my background right now and to what you see on Christopher's background um, as well. He's using the blur. I'm actually using one of the handy dandy backgrounds that we have here, particularly the one that I'm pointing to right now. It's about the fourth or fifth one down on the list. So that being said, um, that really wraps our session, our very brief session um, on our team's uh, features that we have available for you. Do we have any questions that we want to take at this time, particularly around how some of these features may work? Um, yeah, sure. And so basically there's one person that's asking how would they be able to see the interpreter and something that's being shared on the screen for Microsoft Teams? Yes, so that is an issue. I want to say an issue, but it's an opportunity that we have um, that we are actively working towards trying to figure out what's the best way to ensure that you can see both your content and someone that you may have pinned um, together on the screen at the same time. We don't have any uh, we don't have any ETA on when that will uh, happen or when that will be released on Teams. I know that that is a concern, that is a huge concern, um, particularly for the ASL community and leveraging Teams because when you are in a Teams call, if you have someone pinned in large gallery or in your gallery view, when someone shares their screen or shares their content, it then becomes a little bit more difficult to view um, who you've pinned. Of course, that interpreter's pin stays at the top of the list, furthest to the right um, underneath that content, but 
for some folks, it's very difficult to see the interpreter in that very small window. So we are aware of that uh, of that concern and we are actively working towards a solution for that. But in the meantime, I would actually ask all users involved in a call when you know that you're going to have someone um, involved in a call that relies on an interpreter um, that needs to have someone there to explain and see things. I would ask that we reduce the amount of time that we are sharing content and that we be mindful of um, how we're sharing the content. Leveraging the captions, like I mentioned, is not a perfect solution for that, but it is also a great workaround to support in that kind of scenario. If you are careful to make sure that you pause, that you say your words correctly, that you enunciate while you're speaking and no one else is interrupting you, again, going back to the raising your hand feature, take turns, folks. Your captions that you have available are actually very, very reliable. So you can leverage the captions with limited sharing of content um, absolutely only when absolutely needed and that way you can move back and forth between uh, a space that works with the interpreter um, and minimize the impact of sharing your screen for now. That would be my best recommendation. What's our next question? And can you show the zoom feature again? The zoom. zooming in for yeah, yeah of course. Um, so when you are inside of Teams, outside of a Teams call, mind you, this is in the Teams application itself. You can I believe it's usually Control plus and Control minus are your keyboard shortcuts to do so, but you can also manually do this from inside of the profile uh, icon. So if you click on your profile icon to the top right or you select it, it is the one, two, three, four, five, the fifth option to the bottom. Um, that is your zoom in and out option as well as your full screen um, or your reset, sorry. I'm so used to seeing that icon as a visual representation for a uh, full screen. I apologize. I misspoke. I meant to say the zoom reset button is right next to the plus mm -hmm. or minus. OK, perfect. And um, Francesco answered this one, but I think it would be good for the audience to hear. Do live captions work for guests? Can users outside of your organization turn on live captions? So for users outside of your organization, the if they are on the desktop application for teams provided that their organization has a teams license then yes they will be able to see captions on their side because the captions are supported in the desktop version of teams as well as the application version of teams I'll do a rain check on whether it's available on the web browser version as well, but the concern is largely that if someone does not have a license to Teams and they are joining your call from the web browser, it may not be the best experience because I'm not sure if the, t if the captions there have been enabled. What's more, in a later update, um, hopefully sooner than later for GCC folks, there are or there should be uh, the option to also have attributed captions. What we mean by that is I, as a Microsoft employee, am able to see the person's name next to their captions that are scrolling by. And as they are speaking, their name stays next to their captions as it scrolls by on the screen. Right now, GCC is currently set to have just the captions alone with no attributions. Um, that update will be coming to you at a later point in time. Again, I don't have the exact ETA on that, but it is coming. And uh, very important, so I see that Anonymous is writing that some of the coworkers couldn't make it and asking if this is being recorded so they could watch it at their own time. So uh, can you elaborate please on that? Yes, so the same link. Oh, sorry, almost knocked my glasses off there. The same link that you used to join today's call. Please share the exact same link with your colleagues. What normally happens is after this call is over, you're able to click on the same join link to then rewatch the video on demand. And actually, even right now as we're speaking, you have the ability to pause me, rewatch something that you want to see again and then either catch up to us in live or replay the whole thing over. Any other questions there? Um, will voice transcripts be future feature of Microsoft Teams? So if this is in regards to meetings, um, actually, if you just want to stick around on the next session with um, Ryan and Lane, they will talk a little bit about um, 
the transcription part of exactly. the meetings. Yep, um, that is definitely a feature that has multiple purposes beyond just accessibility. So that's one reason why we don't go into too much detail of it here. We've left that for the later session. So one more time, can you show again where you went to display closed captions? Yes, of course. So let's go ahead and just start that call one more time again. I'm going to just start the meet now right here. And actually, I think, Christopher, you might not have to come in for this one all the way. You can just start any good old call will do. All right. And so once we're in the call window after it connects, there we go. I'll just maximize this so we're focused only on this window. Inside of your call window, the very top bar is your horizontal menu. The horizontal menu will show you the participants from left to right, your participants icon, your conversation or chat icon, your raise hand feature so you can raise your hand or unraise it there easily, breakout rooms if your organization supports it, and then the last one, more actions. More actions is for everything else that is not immediately pressing for the call to have access to or for you to have access to on the call. Something like muting your camera or sorry, turning your camera on or off or muting your microphone is probably likely to stay on the toolbar all the time over other items. This more actions is where you're going to find it. So when you click on more actions or more options. Yeah, more actions. I apologize. I can't see my own tooltip very well. You can click on that or you select the more actions and it is the I want to say the eighth or ninth option um, if nothing else is activated in between, but it is uh, right in there and you can select turn on live captions and it's actually right next to applying your background effects. So both of those things are next to each other. Once you do so, it may take a second for it to start the first time around, but once it starts, you're good to go um, and you'll be able to see the captions in real time. I'm actually going to go ahead and demo that one more time for us because those are very popular. A lot of people love to see them. And like I said, it takes a second for it to start, but once it's started, it'll start. Once it started and I unmute myself on the virtual machine, there we go. Uh, you're able to see my captions inside of the call in real time as I'm speaking out loud. All right. And for now, I'm just going to leave this call again. And again, you can rewatch that. So the the step by step for that one there, you can rewatch it just by pausing me and scrolling back inside of the um, actual live event call. Any other questions? Uh, yes, and so I'm sure you probably love this type of questions because you love uh, to to know about accessibility and stuff like that. So is there a resource for how to best use teams for visually impaired individuals who are blind? Yes, so this one really hits close to home because I work with someone who is low vision, um, not blind though, so he doesn't use a screen reader. And that was my lesson on making sure that I ascertained the difference for the needs. <laughs> Lessons on the way. That being said, for blind users, uh, we do have some basic information ourselves, um, but I am aware if you're using JAWS uh, with Teams specifically, there are a lot more specific resources available for you. However, um, this is going to be recorded anyhow, so I can share this uh, kind of quick overview with you of the shortcuts that you have available once you have Teams launched. So the key shortcuts that you're going to want to remember, the very first one above everything else, is control period. Control period will open up in Teams the shortcut um, view for Teams generally. Don't know why my shortcut isn't working there, maybe because it's a virtual machine, but alternatively inside of your settings, uh, you have the keyboard shortcuts. There we go. So control period show keyboard shortcuts that will show you this window um, and this is a window that you can tap through fairly easily so if you are on a screen reader or you're using your keyboard uh, to navigate only you can tap through this in order to listen to the descriptions um, of each as well as the shortcut that is assigned to it to navigate teams the easiest thing that i can um, help you memorize to navigate between activity teams 
uh, sorry, activity chat teams calendar calls and your files um, inside of teams is control one through six. Control one through six are your shortcuts to jump to a specific applet or a specific area inside of Teams um, that we have listed on the left hand side here. So what sighted users like myself will notice or will see easily is the activity chat Teams calendar calls and files listed vertically. To access those quickly um, without having to search through them, it would be control one through control six for activity chat Teams, calendar, calls, and files in that order. So that's a start. It's not the full way there, but it's somewhere to get started. If you know anyone or if you yourself have a need to kind of orient yourself a little bit with Teams. Um, we'll also share some resources as well, um, but I didn't want to wrap too soon since we have until two to take some more questions. Um, we do have a link to share as well with you for additional accessibility so, uh, resources. Yeah, I, think I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. You could, you could go first. I'm sorry. I was just going to say if, if we've wrapped up with the questions, maybe we could share the um, survey slide and talk about that a little bit. Gotcha. But, sorry, you had All right, so uh, I see that someone asked, can you please explain how to quest, uh, to take questions when a, uh, when a hand is up, when the person speaks and show on the monitor? I don't know if this was demo already or you want to show that again. So it's a matter of best practice. Um, I won't I, I, again, I don't want to take too much of everyone's time um, since we already are also a little bit behind due to some technical difficulties. So I want to be mindful of that. Um, but in order to manage that flow of traffic, um, the raise your hand is the option for you to see who wants to speak next and you can call on them to speak or to share their thoughts in chat. Um, everyone should always be patient, allow people enough time to get off of mute, to um, maybe type their message in chat if they're not able to speak at the time. Um, and then you can read it aloud if you'd like to. Um, but there's so many different ways to manage that flow of traffic. Um, each organization, each team, each project group will discover what works best for them. Um, but usually what we'll do in our meetings is we raise our hands, um, we get called on, and then we share our thought. And that's kind of what helps manage that um, flow of traffic plenty. And because we know that there's other people behind us waiting to also speak, we're also very mindful to not take too much time. All right, so that we'll wrap that there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share with you folks some final thoughts there. Um, so for starters, we do have the link one more time uh, for our main page from access for accessibility and for accessibility news as it pertains to Microsoft products. You have Microsoft.com forward slash accessibility spelled out completely two C's, two S's, um, and that's your short link for our main website for that. We do have some additional resources that we will share in the announcements as well. One in particular, which is very handy. Um, it is an accessibility sway, and that is a guide where you can find everything related to accessibility inside of uh, three or four main verticals or three or four main areas of accessibility that we target um, as an organization. And you can find resources there for uh, shortcuts on your keyboards and other items that you may be looking for, depending on what your needs are. Of course, you're free to mix and match as much as you need to based on your individual needs, because if there's one thing I have learned is that disabilities uh, and having disability is intersectional uh, to a degree that most people may not suspect. So we'll share that with you inside of the announcements. Stay tuned for that on the side. For today, uh, it makes me really happy to be here. Thank you so much for your time so far. Uh, on screen, we have a QR code for a survey regarding today's accessibility session, um, where we're asking you a few questions for feedback, as well as if you are interested in having a training for a 90 minute session, a full length session in either neurodiversity, um, neurodiversity vision, 
as well as hearing, we offer 90 minute sessions for each one of those three areas that does go over Microsoft 365 from Windows to Teams. Um, you can contact your customer success manager. Um, first slide back at the beginning, we'll have that information. I think that was in the last one, so we'll probably share it again before we move on. Um, and also you can express interest in wanting to have a training like this for your, for your organization or for your local group um, with a survey on screen, which is aka.ms forward slash day two a at letter a 11 y survey the word survey so day two a 11 y survey the number 11. all right and with that i will pass it back to us at